Okay guys, so in this video I'm going to walk you through some ideas about generic styles in CSS and how I think that you should think about generic styles. So let's get into it. So we're basically going to walk through what I think a good decision is and what a bad decision is in CSS. And I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about the most common issues with CSS and something that I call destructive CSS and also how to think just in general about CSS when you're trying to make something a little bit generic. So so let's first and foremost ask the fundamental question, What, when does CSS become a problem? Well apart from of course having issues maybe to make some effect the way that you want it to, have it to be and making things work in a responsive manner on multiple devices and all that good stuff, the biggest problem comes when CSS becomes a legacy and legacy is the main reason why you may face problems actually accommodating certain features in your applications. So that brings the fundamental question then, okay, what creates legacy CSS? Well, I will argue that legacy CSS comes from poor choices being made at a previous point in time, and basically those choices then leads to a snowballing effect where because somebody else has styled things in a fashion that may have made sense for them at that point in time, but they didn't, they didn't really think about the effect of their decision long term. Well, now you're in this problematic situation where they may have generic styles or styles that are mutating your elements, and now you're forced to either use like overrides or things of this nature, or sometimes you might even not be able to do that. You need to find some way of hacking together a solution in order to accommodate the stuff that you actually want to happen. And then of course that means that okay so you are hacking in a solution now, what's stopping from the next person coming along and now realizing that hey your hack is actually destroying the feature that they're trying to add to the page and now they have to hack around your hack and that kind of grows on you. And from experience I can tell you that this is actually very common, especially in large applications where it's very hard to change CSS because hey, it's global. And when you have a lot of pages, it's very dangerous to have generic styles in general unless you do it correctly. Because if you do, it's very hard to figure out what styles are actually included on what pages. So thinking about it is is quite important. So basically the thing that we need to think about is that your features may change very very quickly and you need to write CSS in such a fashion that it becomes very, even if it's a generic solution, it has to be something that is non-destructive. It has to be designed in such a way that you can accommodate change, like different new requirements without having to change previous decisions or at the very least if you have to change the previous decision you have to be very it has to be very easy for you to figure out what those decisions which pages will you have to go and update in order to undo those decisions so i'm going to show you a few examples of you know what i've seen so far and kind of the way that i've think like the best way that I've seen people kind of solve this problem with being generic. So first we have some basic styles here and one of the most common thing I, I see is that all right so we start off by styling a button and if we go to my little page here we see that this is my button. This is the button like this is usually how it starts. Someone says that this is a button on my web page and then I go and style it and these are my styles. Cool, so here is my markup and my button is now styled. Awesome. And then some time passes and all of a sudden there comes in, there's a new feature request from your design department or your designer or if you are this, the, the designer. Like your customer says that, hey, I need another type of button. So now I need to create a button that looks like this. And you go, okay, no problem. But you don't go back and change the original button because that might be a lot of work for you because you know your application is probably at the you know if it's a professional level application it's probably going to be pretty big and you're probably going to have quite a few buttons so you're not going to do that you're because that's not going to be feasible in time I mean it's too you know you're just going you, you just have a short amount of time to fix this right so now you use the cascading effect of CSS and you simply add another button which you're give, gonna give a class, which is called another button. And then you create all of these you know, generic styles down here and you simply kind of make it work and there you are, here's another button. Now, 
you know this this effect you know i can only share with you what i've seen so far and i mean this just keeps on going i can promise you there will always be another button like you, you think you're done but i promise you there will always be another another button or there's always going to be a new tool tip there's always going to be some new deviation doesn't matter how generic how, like how standardized you think that you think are standards things are going to be there's always going to be another element and when you write things in this fashion, as you can probably see here, we're simply now nesting specificity or, and we are creating more and more specific selectors. And it's very likely that at some point we might actually burrow down so deep in here and create somebody's just at, along the way here going to make some mistake. And all of a sudden it becomes very tricky for you to keep on styling or updating this button or this button simply because you haven't thought so carefully about how you actually like how, how the long term of your project is going to look because you start off with the simple mindset that oh a button is just a button right all right so let's go over to the next thing I see a lot of people doing which is that okay I want to create a section then I want to try to scope my because this is this is usually how it starts with people when they start working with CSS they kind of keep things very very generic just in or rather like they they have very broad selectors and then some people go into the mindset okay I've had started to see a bit of problems where there are global styles that are mutating you know my, my environment where I'm trying to work or the component I'm trying to update somehow so let's just create sections instead sections is also a very popular way of doing things and what a lot of people will do with a section is that basically they create some root element and then they give that a very specific selector like an ID and and they say that all right this is my ID and now I will simply style things in a generic fashion or a, like a very broad fashion inside of that element awesome that's gonna help me out right okay so let's look at that so we have the basic styles here and like I actually go to the page here and you see that he these are my buttons they are just like looking like that and you see that we start off by okay so we have this generic page button which is just you know it's the standard button that's just the thing that's going to be on every page right and then i have my section here which has some style has some styles and now i have in my section a button that is now overriding the previous styles of this thing here and i'm adding some you know some basic styles to that so if we look here all right we start simple and i have my button cool and I can even add a special button, also pretty straightforward, right? because now I have this namespace here, so a special button is no problem for me to add. And then a new feature comes in, and all of a sudden now you may find that you have another section within your first section. And this also happens very often where, okay, so now I need to do this thing here, so my section is no longer just the single source of truth, because I created this section where I thought that okay everything that was associated with this feature was going to fit nicely into this section but now I actually have a situation where there's a new feature somewhere deep inside of my existing feature and it makes a lot of sense for me to segment that as well because all these generic styles I might I mean I, I don't want the button in my new section down here it shouldn't have the same styling as the button up here so now I have to segment that somehow so okay I'll as I said, I just create a section within a section, and this is usually this is a recipe, recipe usually a recipe for disaster because what happens then when there's another feature inside of this section, and all of a sudden you have a feature in that and in that, and you know it can kind of just grow on you, and all of a sudden you have features with like these sections within sections within sections within sections, and so it becomes very tricky for you because remember all the styling that is applied to these selectors higher up is going to go down here. Now you have to be really careful to make sure that you keep track on the trick, keep track of what styles that you need to override and what styles you should let through, and it, it usually ends fairly poorly. So finally i have a well this is a styling system that is very like it's basically the way that the mainstream frameworks use generic styles and i'll walk you through kind of some of the thoughts around this and why i think that this is the way that you should try to structure things so here is my little library of different button components for using like truly generic styles or th something that i call non-destructive CSS. So what is the idea of non-destructive CSS? Well, 
If you think about it, the first mistake that we made in these previous examples is this. This thing here. That's the biggest. That, th this is the first mistake we've made. And why is this a mistake? Well, because we have assumed that the semantics of a button is tied into the styling of the button. Why are we doing that? There's no reason why we should style the button element. Because think about it. What if I just want a button? This is just a button. This is a completely unstyled element. But if I do this, I have destroyed the semantics of what a button actually is. It's not, the, there is no concept within my page anymore that is just an unstyled button. I have to undo all of the styling to achieve this basic effect. Because all of the others, I mean, these are destroyed buttons. These, because of this style, I can't really change it. And the worst part is that, as I said, if I remove this style now in a big application, every single following, of, all of these other styles that are associated with that with the assumption that this uh, this base element has been styled in a certain fashion is going to be completely destroyed. In other words, it cascades on you. The, 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 the decision, the first bad decision was this. And now every single following decision is affected by this original decision. And that's the thing that you need to avoid. If you think about it, Bootstrap and these mainstream CSS frameworks, they don't do this. And they don't do it for that exact reason. Because they cannot, like, they cannot create a selector or like a style that is so generic that it could, in theory, like, that it makes assumptions on the already existing styles of those elements. And that's what I'm trying to say here to you. I'm trying to say that the first mistake is to assume that this button element, this base button, needs a style. Because it doesn't. It Because it becomes a destructive thing. You remove the base styling and that's what you want to keep around. So I think you should kind of think about it as, you know, when you're creating truly generic and reusable styles, to think about it as chewing tobacco versus smoking. One only affects you and the other affects everyone around you. And what you're going for is to, is a a way is an opt-in solution. You're trying to create a selector system that allows a consumer of your generic styles to simply add them to whatever element they want and simply build up the style that they're looking for instead of assuming what it is that they what effect they want to achieve. So in my examples here, you'll see that I have quite a few buttons. So let's just walk through it. So instead of just styling the button, I create a base button selector or a class and then all I have to do here is to create a button and apply that which is just going to contain the base styles. Now I could stay, stick with that but it's very likely that just saying button isn't going to be good enough and in the mainstream frameworks you will often see that they have a base button styling and then they have the specifics. So you have the base styles expressed through just say button and then you have the specifics, like what type of button is it? Is it a link button? Is it a primary button? Is it a warning? Is it an error button? So you can kind of build up your styling as you go along. And the flexibility of this is that now, okay, I can express that this is going to be a button and I can also express what type of button it's going to be. So I can now scale this to basically any, like I can add as many like variants of buttons as I want. I still get the benefits of just having my base styles applied, but I can also accommodate as many changes and as many updates as, updates as I want. Other things that you should consider is that when you're styling the base element, just button, well, are you really sure that you always want the button to look like a button? What if it's an icon? Well, what if it's this thing here? This is still a button. But, you know, the styles that you may have had in your head when you're you were designing the original button may not have been the same thing you were thinking about for an icon. So the same thing applies here. Instead of having, instead of styling the base element, I'm simply adding a class selector, or like a class called icon. An icon has, their, has it's, an, it's, the, it's basically its own thing. It has its own semantics. And I can apply the same mindset here. I basically just set the element that I want to style. I apply the base styles, which is the styles of an icon, and then I can express which variant of icon I want. I mean, I could have many different types of icons, so by just having, having a base styler and then the variant, it becomes very flexible very, very quickly. And then finally, I want to talk about, okay, is a button always a button? 
that's also a mental assumption a lot of people make where all right so you st style the base element but are you really sure that that's what you want are you really are you really trying to style a button or are you simply trying to make something look like a button because there are quite a few situations where you know this is just this is an this is an, an h tag or an a tag i mean this is a link I want, I mean, your design like your designers and so forth, they will not, I mean, I've had that discussion many times. What is a link? What is a button? Most people don't really care about the differences. But what is true, though, is that they want it to look a certain way. And it's very often that a link looks like a button. Just that, as it's very common that a span looks like a button. Or that an input looks like a button. So... By adding this base button styler, you can actually make these element look the way that you want. And you can, as I see, as you see here, I can just create a variant, which is a link button. Or if I have an element that already fits the primary button selector, I can simply use that instead. So it becomes, you know, it becomes a discussion about, all right, are you sure that it is the button element that you want to style? Or is it simply that you want something to look like a button? That's also something to keep with you. And by simply using this opt-in method and instead of like mutating base selectors or base tags and simply add is adding these uh, these opt-in classes, you kind of you, you you get away from that problem completely. So and finally as we as we touched on before, I mean you can add as many variants to a button as you could possibly want here. And the same thing goes for most components. So what I want you to take away from this is that Try to avoid creating CSS that forces a set of styles onto every decision that will be taken from then on in. What you're going for is to create a selector system that is only opt-in. You should at no point create a selector that touches something that it's not supposed to be touching because even if you think that it's the best use case in the world, even if you're 100% sure that, yeah, today this, this uh, is going to be the right decision, you don't know what new features you're going to have in a week or two weeks or six years. So it's a much safer option to simply create selectors that apply the styles that you want and use a selector to express what you want as opposed to stay sty styling or creating these destructive quote-unquote style sheets that mutate the base styling because remember if you ever add that in and you start building features on top of those base styles it's almost impossible for you to go back and change it so make sure that you think about that before you start styling your base tags have a great day